there, I am Dr. Sarah Wooten, and this webinar is entitled Leptospirosis and Flu in Dogs and What You Need to Know. Before we get into the information contained in this webinar, I always like to introduce myself to my audience. So, hi there, I'm Dr. Sarah Wooten. I am a 2002 graduate of UC Davis School of Veterinary Medicine. I have practiced small animal medicine with dogs and cats for 16 years in California and Colorado. I am a national writer speaker to both pet parent audiences and veterinary audiences. I write for PetMD, The Hills Pet Nutrition Blog, Chewy.com, as well as other outlets. You may have seen me or heard me in any of those places. I'm a certified veterinary journalist, which means I spend a lot of time talking to pet parents just like you. And most importantly, I am a dog mom. This is my dog, Alma. She is a golden doodle, and I love her very much. Before we get into the information contained in this webinar, I have to give you this medical disclaimer. The information contained in this webinar is not intended or implied to be a substitute for professional veterinary advice. It is provided for educational purposes only. You assume full responsibility for how you choose to use this information. Always, always, always seek the advice of your veterinarian before starting or stopping any treatment and talk to your veterinarian about any questions. Okay, what is leptospirosis? Let's talk about this thing. Leptospirosis is called lepto for short. You might have heard it called lepto. Leptospirosis is a contagious infectious disease. It's caused by a bacteria called Leptospira and is found in wildlife. This is a map of the distribution of reported lepto cases in the United States. The darker the color, the more heavily it's reported in a certain area. And as you can see, it's pretty widespread all over the United States. And some of the places where you don't see it, well, it may not be reported there because maybe there's not a lot of people living there or we just haven't seen any, any dogs come down with it. Leptospira is found in wildlife. It's uh, found in raccoons and coyotes and foxes and rats and mice and skunks. It can infect over 160 species of mammals and that's all we know today. It could be even more, and we just don't even know it. It used to be called wheelbarrow disease, and it might still be called that in some third world countries because what would happen is farmers would go out into the fields to do their work. They would contract the disease from the wildlife or the water out there, and they would get so sick that they would have to be brought home in a wheelbarrow. So you may have heard it called wheelbarrow disease before. It is definitely contagious to humans. It is spread mostly from the urine of infected animals. The urine of infected animals is highly contagious to dogs and to humans. And dogs that are also drinking from streams, rivers, or lakes that harbor the parasites can also contract lepto. It uh, goes in through the mucous membranes, so the gums uh, or a wound. It could also be transmitted by a bite from an infected animal. If a dog eats infected tissues or dead animals that have um, leptospirosis, they can also become infected. And then rarely it is spread through breeding or through the placenta. The picture on the left is a picture of a dog just drinking out of a little puddle of water that could contain leptospirosis from the urine of an infected animal. So why is this important? Well, in dogs, lepto infections can be very mild, just some flu-like symptoms, some lethargy, a mild fever, some malaise, a loss of appetite. And it may be so slight that you don't even notice it. It can also cause fatal liver failure, kidney failure, bleeding disorders, and eye problems. Um, the problem is that the urine of an infected dog is very contagious to people. 
And in people, leptospirosis causes liver disease, kidney failure, meningitis, lung and heart disorders, eye problems, and it can even cause miscarriages. The good news is that lepto can be treated. Uh, the treatment of lepto almost always requires hospitalization, and the reason for this is that the urine from infected dogs is extraordinarily contagious to humans. Those dogs need to be isolated, and they need to be cared for with tra uh, by trained professionals who use biohazard equipment to protect themselves. Those dogs usually require a urinary catheter to collect infected urine and keep humans safe. Antibiotics are the mainstay of treatment, and then treatment really does depend on what organs are affected. Sometimes pets just need supportive care, such as IV fluids and antibiotics. Other times they may need dialysis or treatment for liver failure. It just depends on what organs are affected. The good news is that lepto, if it's caught early enough, is usually treatable and most pets recover. So in the past, uh, leptospirosis wasn't a big deal for all dogs. I even remember when I first started, and that was back in early 2000s, uh, I didn't talk about lepto to most of my clients. I only talked to people who had hunting and sporting breeds because the only at-risk dogs were dogs that were hunting or dogs that spent a lot of time around wildlife. And so those dogs were the only ones I talked to about becoming vaccinated against leptospirosis. Leptospirosis is prevented, can be prevented by vaccine. The vaccine is considered non-core or a, a lifestyle vaccine in the past. That was because only those dogs that were around wildlife were at risk. So we were only vaccinating those dogs. But now things have changed. Because of the spread of suburbs into wildlife areas, lepto has moved into urban areas. And unfortunately, the new risk factors for lepto are small breed dogs that live in urban areas and are unvaccinated against leptospirosis. And I have a picture of that cute little Yorkie in a purse because we actually saw a patient just like that at our clinic here in Greeley, Colorado, that had developed leptospirosis. And that cute little dog literally lived in the purse all the time, except for the few times that the owner would set the pet down to go pee uh, or poop. And that dog would get down on the grass and became infected and came in to see us. This information actually uh, is released by a veterinarian named Dr. DeBess, who is the Oregon State Public Health Veterinarian. He actually did a lot of research and determined that things have changed, and now these little guys are uh, at risk, as much at risk as the hunting dogs and the dogs that spend a lot of time out in the wilderness. This is a picture of a lake, actually. This is a picture of a little tiny lake right by my house in Greeley, Colorado, uh, named Glenmere Pond. It's a beautiful area. It is highly visited by uh, all sorts of people. Kids are fishing. People are bringing their dogs. Everyone is walking and having a great time. And this wonderful area, this park, is right smack dab in the middle of our town of 100,000 people. But guess who else lives here in this neighborhood? You guessed it, we have raccoons, we have fox, and we have field mice. And all of these guys harbor lepto, and I've actually seen pets come down with leptospirosis in my neighborhood in the middle of town. So the threat is real, and you need to be aware of it. So with lepto, prevention is key. There is no vaccine available for people. So we recommend as veterinarians to vaccinate at-risk dogs. And that is most dogs in the United States. Yearly vaccination is recommended because the antibodies do not stay high enough in the system of dogs to continue to provide protection. So 
in the past, there used to be vaccine reaction concerns with this vaccine. And I do remember when I first started 16 years ago that some breeds of dogs, especially some of the ones that had a higher uh, incidence of vaccine reactions, some doxies and chihuahuas, I did see some vaccine reactions. However, the vaccine has been purified and perfected through the years, and we very rarely see reactions with this vaccine anymore. But if you do have reaction concerns, ask your veterinarian to separate the vaccine and give it separately from other vaccines. Um, this updated 4-serovar, so it has Leptospira canicola, Grippa typhosa, Ictahemorrhagica, and Pomona. That is four different strains of Lepto. It is safer. It is much safer than the older vaccine. However, no vaccine is 100% effective. There is a possibility that even with getting the Leptospirosis vaccine that your dog could come down with the disease if he was ex exposed. The good news is that if your dog is vaccinated, it will reduce morbidity and mortality. And what that means is it will reduce the amount of uh, sickness that your pet experiences, and it reduces the likelihood that your pet is going to die. Furthermore, the vaccine has a warranty, which means that if your pet ever does become infected with lepto after becoming properly vaccinated, the manufacturer actually pays for the treatment. The cost of the vaccine is anywhere from $15 to $30. The initial series is two injections that are given two to three weeks apart, and then it's given yearly. And it is a cheap, easy way to protect your pet against this disease. Okay, the next thing we're gonna talk about is canine influenza, dog flu. So dog flu is a virus. It causes a persistent cough. It causes a runny nose and really thick yellow mucus. I mean, these noses are running and they are snotty. Uh, these dogs don't wanna eat. They have a fever, they're tired. And sometimes if they develop pneumonia, they can have difficulty breathing. There are two strains of dog flu in the US. There is H3N2. It's very contagious, but it only causes mild disease. And there is H3N8, which causes severe disease. Both of these strains are widespread and their, their spread changes every year. So in order to get the latest on dog flu, there's an awesome resource online. It's easy to remember, it's dogflu.com. You can go there and you can see distribution maps, and all of the latest information on dog flu in the United States. Okay, so here's the facts about dog flu, ready? It's not a seasonal issue. In humans, flu is a seasonal issue, but in dogs, it's a year round problem. The most commonly affected dogs are middle-aged dogs. And again, that is different than human flu because the most commonly affected humans with human flu are the very old, the very sick, and the very young. Dogs infected with canine influenza can be infectious for up to three weeks after onset. Even after they stop having clinical signs, they can still be infectious. The H3N2 strain, it only produces mild disease, but it is extremely infectious. And in fact, it can catch a ride on your clothes. And fortunately, there is no evidence that dog flu infects humans. So if your dog gets the flu, just like in humans, treatment is supportive, supportive care. So IV fluids, lots of rest, uh, antibiotics for any secondary infections, just the same as in humans. The thing about flu is it is extraordinarily contagious to other dogs. So if your dog is diagnosed with influenza, your dog needs to be kept away from other dogs, not only other dogs in the outside world, but other dogs in your household. And experts recommend isolating any dog that has been diagnosed with canine flu for four weeks after showing signs to prevent spread to other dogs. Fortunately, there is a vaccine available. Uh, there is a vaccine available that has both of those strains, 
which will reduce the risk of your dog contracting influenza. Again, the vaccine is not 100%, and what it does is if your dog is exposed, just like the human vaccine, it reduces the clinical signs and the risk of spreading disease, just like the human flu vaccines. It does not provide immunity. That's a very important part of knowing what this vaccine does and does not do. This vaccine truly is a lifestyle vaccine. Not all dogs need a dog flu vac vaccine. My dog is never around other dogs, so she doesn't get the canine influenza vaccine. But if your dog goes to daycare or boarding or training or shows or any group setting or dog parks, you should get the vaccine. If you are wondering whether your dog needs this vaccine, well, there is an awesome resource online. Just Google AAHA, AHA, which stands for American Animal Hospital Association, AAHA Lifestyle Vaccine Calculator. And what that lets you do is put in your lifestyle factors, and then it gives you a recommendation for what vaccines your pet should receive. So that's all I have on leptospirosis and canine influenza. Thank you so much for your attention and have a wonderful day.